In 2002, Catherine had just begun her freshman year at Loyola University on Chicago's north side. Like many of her classmates, she'd heard about the supposedly haunted 13th floor of the Mundelein Center, one of the oldest buildings on campus. One night in early October, she and five friends decided to check it out with a Ouija board in tow. Normally, Catherine would have had a pack of cigarettes with her. Tonight, she couldn't find them. They weren't on the kitchen table, and she had to leave to go meet her friends. The center was currently under renovations, and all floors above the 8th were gutted. This made getting to the 13th floor a bit challenging. They could no longer take the standard elevator. Instead, they had to use a vintage service elevator behind a campus security desk. The group also had to split up into two groups because only three people could fit into the tiny elevator. It was the kind that required riders to manually close and lock the doors. Once inside, darkness would engulf you. The only source of light was a tiny window, and light flickered as the elevator rose between the different floors. They started the Ouija board session immediately. Security guards visited the upper floors regularly, looking for parties and random students up to a little bit of misbehavior. And the group didn't want to get reprimanded during their first month at college. Three of the students placed their hand on the planchette and started to ask questions to any spirits that could be nearby. Catherine wasn't one of them. About 15 minutes into the session, the group made contact. The lead questioner asked the spirit if they had a message for anyone. As the planchette slid over the letters, it slowly spelled out a name. K-A-T-I-E, Katie. Then the planchette started swirling and spelt out now. And it continued to spell now over and over again. That announcement stunned Catherine. She never told anyone in the group her family nickname is Katie. She chose to go by her full name at the start of class. The group became scared as the spirit continued to use them to spell Katie and now. They stopped the session, flipping the board over and sliding the planchette across the room. They vowed never to return to the 13th floor, nor use a Ouija board again. When Catherine arrived home that night, she had another surprise. Her misplaced pack of cigarettes lie on her bed, open, with individual cigarettes strewn across a black comforter. They spelled out the name Katie. And Catherine lived alone 